Let's learn the basics of Java for Minecraft modding. Alright, welcome to the Java introduction here for Minecraft modding, basically an updated Java introduction so that you can sort of jump into Minecraft modding after finishing this introduction. In this case, we'll not cover everything that is to learn in Java. However, hopefully after the 31 videos, including some exercises, you will hopefully have a better understanding of Java so that you can use that to properly mod Minecraft. Now, even if you have no interest in modding Minecraft, this can still be a really useful Java introduction to you. While I have catered it to making it for modding Minecraft, you can still watch it. And let's start with the first things. We're going to need two programs. The first one is a JDK or Java Development Kit. I will link this one from Adoptium over here. We are going to be using version 17. The reason why we're using version 17 here is because the newest Minecraft version currently uses JDK 17. You could, in theory, also use newer ones. However, in this case, we're going to use 17. Really, for our purposes, the differences are barely noticeable. So you can go for a newer ones. So for example, you could go for JDK 21. However, we're going to choose 17 over here. Right, you then want to choose the correct one for your operating system. So you can see Windows, Linux, there's also Mac OS. Now make sure, basically 90% of the time, you want to choose the x64. This is for 64-bit systems. If you choose the x86, that is for 32-bit systems. You probably want to choose this one. I'm going to choose the MSI. That's that's just an installer over here and also make sure to choose the JDK. That's also quite important. So you want to choose the MSI for the JDK for X64. And then you can install that onto your PC like any other program. When you're starting it, there is one thing that is quite important, and that is make sure that the set a Java home variable over here is will be enabled because that's just going to make our lives a little bit simpler. And once that is the case, you can hit next and install it onto your PC like any other program. Once you've done that, we can now proceed to get an IDE or integrated development environment. Now, this is quite important, so pay close attention over here. When you're on the IntelliJ website, you want to scroll down to the community edition because that one is free. Ultimate costs something. You can see free 30-day trial. You do not want the Ultimate Edition. You do not need it at all in any way, shape, or form. Scroll down to the Community Edition. Make sure to download the correct version. It is the Community Edition. You just have to scroll down. You click Download right here, and then it's going to download it for you. The name of the file has to be, as you can see, Ideal C. That is the Community Edition. Double check that, that that's the case. You do not have to use the Ultimate Edition for this. You do not have to pay for the IDE. Please. However, once you have done this, you can now install that program onto your PC as well. So you can see, there you go, and it even says IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. Please double check that that is the case. So basically here, you can just install it like any other program onto your PC as well. And once you've done this, then it should start on its own. If it doesn't start on its own, that's fine. Then you can just start it yourself. And while it's not going to look exactly like this, it's going to be similar because you will have three buttons, a new project button, an open button, and a get from VCS button. And we want to choose the new project button. When you click on this, a window similar to this should open and you want to be on a new project. That's very important. Don't be on a Java FX or Maven archetype. You want to be on a new project at the top left corner right here. You can then give it a name. For example, we're going to call this the Java introduction over here. We're going to actually call the new Java introduction because that's going to be it. And then here you can choose the location. Let me just choose the location over here. That's the location. Java, the build system is IntelliJ. The JDK is 17. That's the one that we downloaded. And make sure that the add sample code over here is checked. For the advanced settings, we basically don't need anything else. And that is the way that this should work. And then you hit create and then a new window is going to pop up. There you go. It's going to look kind of like this. Now we have some modifications that we want to do in order for this to be properly done the way that I have it. And the first thing is you want to go to the dots over here, the options on the project thing. Under tree appearance, you want to make sure that both flattened packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. Now, if this is turned on, nothing is going to change for you. So you can see that, you know, it doesn't change over here on the left. However, I'm telling you that it's going to change a little bit once we are done with the modification. There's one more thing that we want to do, and that's just a little bit of a pet peeve. I don't know why they've removed it, but in the SCR over here, we want to right click new package. And then I'm going to call my account control because that is my name. You can basically call your name, right? If your name is John, you can just call it John. That's going to be fine. You want to then take this main and just drag it in here, hit this refactor, and you can open it up again. And then you can see everything is fine. You can see that this package count over here has appeared. It just makes a lot of sense to have it in a package over here. And then we can basically take a look at what is going on. So in the first lesson over here, we're not really going to jump in too much. I basically just want to have this set up and then we should be fine. Now we can expand this over here and you can see this is basically the entire main class. This is your entry point. This is where the program is going to start from. And everything inside of the curly brackets right here, right? This opening curly bracket and this closing curly bracket, this is what 
is going to be executed when we actually run a program here in this case. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hit this little run button over here. And you can see we're going to hit run main main. And then at the very bottom over here, you can see there's a bunch of crazy stuff over here. And then at the bottom here, it says hello world. Exactly what is written right here. And that is what it's going to output. So what you can do between the quotation marks, you can change something. So you can, for example, say hello. This is a cool YouTube series for learning Java. Without doing anything else, I can just go to the top right over here. Once we've run this once, it has now saved this main over here on the top right. So we now just hit run again. And you can see now it says, hello, this is a cool YouTube series for learning Java. So you may have just output the first thing ever in terms of programming. So congratulations. This is the first step that every single programmer has gone through every single time, be it beginners, intermediates or advanced people or even famous programmers, whoever you might think of. So they have all gone through the same idea of, first of all, outputting something in the console. Now, one very important thing, yeah, there's a bunch of different words over here, right? Public, class, main, public, static, void, main, string, and then these weird symbols. Most of this stuff we're going to ignore for the first couple of episodes here in the tutorial series. Reason being is otherwise you are going to be overwhelmed with complexity. Right now, basically in the first couple of series, and I will reiterate that as we go along, you basically want to just focus on what is between this curly bracket and this curly bracket. You can even see if I click, you know, sort of next to it, that both of them sort of get selected because what is inside of here, right? All of this stuff is basically the stuff that we're going to focus on for the time being. Once we venture out of it, then I'm going to explain what each of those different things mean. And by the end of the series, you should be totally fine to understand what is public, what is a class, right? Maybe even what is main, quote unquote, right? What is void? What does this strange symbol mean? You should be able to understand all of it. But once again, one step at a time. Otherwise, you're, it's just going to be too much complexity basically at the same time. So there you go. Now, one important thing also is that every time there is a new episode of this, there is going to be the entire code written in the description below. I will have a GitHub repository as well as a gist. So basically, this entire main class is going to be always be available to you to basically take a look at, compare the code, and for you to even copy it over, run it once, and then say, okay, maybe what happens if I modify this? This is definitely going to be a thing where I would encourage you to play around a lot with the code that I'm providing you. And then you're hopefully going to be learning a lot of stuff. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons and members on YouTube for basically making this series and a lot of my other tutorials possible. Thank you so much for the support, guys. And if you also want to support the channel, take a look at the Patreon link, or you can also support by becoming a member on this channel. Thank you so much, everyone, for your continued support. And don't worry, there are tons more topics planned. Everything from the very basics all the way to array strings, crazy stuff like that. So I'm really excited for you to follow along with this series. And you can do that by checking out this video right here. We'll talk about comments, data types, and basic variables. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.